For as long as Aston Martin has been building cars with DB or V8 Vantage written on it, and as long as Jag's been building XKs, it's been a natural response to want to compare the two, and it's a justifiable comparison to make. But beyond talking about the fun of 0-60, horsepower, which one looks better, which one sounds better, these schoolyard things that we carry into childhood and still value, and there's nothing wrong with it, it's actually really two things that matter the most in practice. Because when you are in a financial position to actually drop the 25, 30 plus thousand pounds required to own one, what you really care about is two things. What it's like to live with and what it's like to drive. And that is the purpose of this video. Because just like the previous installments of Rivals, I want to make this about what these cars are really like. Not how quick they are around the top gear track, not which one can howl more, not which one can win a drag race what they're like in real life. Now, first of all, we have to make things fair. So we're gonna compare like a 2000 style V8 Vantage, the baby Aston, no V12, against the five liter version of the Jag XK. Might not seem to be a fair matchup. The Jag has a huge advantage in terms of power, for example, but the simple reason is we have to make it fair on price. Because if you make it a 4.2 XKR, well, it's a moot point immediately. Of course, that's great for the Jag, but not so much if you want an Aston. You can't get an Aston for anywhere near a 4.2 Jag money, because they just aren't on the market, unless you get one that's been crashed, damaged, or has ridiculously high miles. And even then, it will be a DB7, most likely, not a V8 Vantage. So for the 25, 30 grand kind of region, you're looking at V8 Vantage versus 5 liter XKR. A pretty good matchup, all things considered, and that is, after all, the one that Top Gear went for. There is one thing in particular, one critical point about each car, which I believe both can and for most of you should be the deciding factor. The biggest deciding factor that should make you want the Jaguar is the value for money. And I'm not just talking about bang for buck, horsepower per pound, purchase price even, I'm talking literally everything in every single way the Jaguar is more affordable. To buy, the amount of horsepower you get for the money is higher, but also fuel economy is better. Servicing is cheaper. Parts are not even close on price. Jaguars undercut so many of their rivals by such a huge amount, it's not even funny. So consistently across the board, the Jaguar is so much more affordable to live with. And that's ignoring the initial purchase price, but when you factor that in as well, it only adds to its advantage. That is a huge advantage in the Jaguar's favor. So if you love both of them, but care about your money going further, then the Jag is absolutely the one for you. What then about the Aston? Well, there is another critical advantage to the Aston, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, but the one that I'm in particular talking about might not initially be obvious, but when you think about it, it's actually kind of crazy. And that is, a manual gearbox. Now for me, I couldn't care less. I'm not a manual fan unless it comes to motorcycles, and in a car I will always choose an auto if it's an option. But for many people, especially in this kind of sphere, a supercar, sports car, GT, whatever you want to call it, having a manual could literally make the difference between buying something and not buying it. And as crazy as it sounds to stop and think about this for a second, there is not a single version of the Jaguar XK platform that I've ever seen with a manual. Stop and think about that for a second. That's kind of insane. We've had so many different versions, even including hardcore models like the RS and the GT, and yet none of them even have the option of a manual. Now, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, the only ones that have a manual are the literal racing versions of the Jag XK, which don't exactly count. Whereas with a baby Aston, you can absolutely buy a V8 Vantage with a straight up manual gearbox and a clutch pedal. That literally could tip the entire weight of the scale in the Aston's favor. And from what I've heard at least, it might even be the one to go for, because even though Aston does have automatic options, more so automated manuals with push buttons on the dash, which work well enough, they're admittedly clunkier, they're not quite as efficient, not quite as straightforward to use as a Jag's much more traditional automatic. So even in terms of having an auto, the Jag has the advantage there just in general, but when it comes to having a manual, well, Jag doesn't even have one. So the Aston wins by default, and that is why I believe that is the biggest, sharpest arrow that Aston Martin has in their quiver on this occasion. Secondarily to that, though, I do want to talk about one additional point in favour of each car. The second additional point for the Jaguar is something which I referenced just now, but it is critically important as well. 
and that is the bang for buck. The performance is tantamount for the money. So you don't only want a GT car, but you want the fastest, the most powerful GT car for the money. Well, I mean, as an aside, there's an argument to be made there for a Bentley Continental, if you care that much. But even so, within the world of Jag, the 5 litre for the money is legitimately a superior performance car to the V8 Vantage for about the same price. And really, it's only once you get up into V8 Vantage S, especially V12 Vantage territory, that things start to get interesting. The 5 litre Jag has such a huge advantage on horsepower over 500, an even bigger advantage on torque, and the performance is at least on par, most people would admit, it is quicker than the Aston albeit with a speed limiter in some cases. The second advantage to the Aston though is one that is not to be discounted, because yes, the Aston is slower. Yes, the Aston is more expensive both to buy and to live with, but the trade-off is the reason why it's more expensive to live with, the badge. When I say that you're buying the badge, I mean it in a similar way to, for example, why I prefer buying a Maserati over the equivalent Jaguar. I love Jaguars, and I praise them to no end, and yet, I've had one Jaguar, and I've had three Maseratis. If Jaguars are better, why do I buy more Maseratis? Well, for one thing, because they're misunderstood for the most part, people just don't know which one to buy, but also because there is an unarguable extra layer of wow factor to certain brands. Pagani, Koenigsegg, Spyker, and in the more affordable end, Aston Martin, Porsche, Maserati. These are exotic brands. That's all there is to it. So even though something like a Jag might be a more safe choice, you do at least know that if you are willing to take the extra risk on an Aston and pay the extra premium, you are getting an Aston Martin. And that is kind of a big deal. When you pull up in a Jag, it's a lovely car. When you pull up in an Aston, it is just factually a different experience. It has a different presence, it has a different level of prestige, even for the exact same money, and that is just a fact. So it's one which is not to be put to one side. In summary then, I think that really the value and the bang for buck should swing you towards the Jaguar if that's the most important thing to you, and included in that is that extra performance for the money. If you're looking more for the budget supercar experience, with that incredible presence and prestige, the wow factor, and also, critically, if you want a manual gearbox, then you should look in favour of the Aston. My closing thought, though, should be in the form of a teaser, that if you're looking for a better rival between Aston and Jag, what you should really be considering is an XKR 5 litre versus a DB9. Because now you're really talking. Because again, similar kind of prices on the used market if you're looking to the 30, 35,000 pound mark, and a 6 litre V12 480 horsepower Aston that can do nearly 190 miles an hour is a much spicier matchup to a 5 litre 500 horsepower supercharged Jack. Ultimately, though, that's it for my thoughts on this showdown. It is one which people will always continue to debate and fall on either side of. And to be clear, I think both cars are fantastic. The Aston is higher maintenance, the Jag isn't quite as exotic, there's, you know, pays and trade offs. Either way, that's it for my thoughts. Give me yours down below, certainly if you're an owner of one or both. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.